There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels, left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch, in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, in Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350, and throughout Europe there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us, seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools? It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization having crudely cut these tunnels, possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. The underground cities of Cappadocia, Turkey, number more than 200 and are spread across the entire region. It is highly possible that there is many more lying below the surface just waiting to be found. Of all the underground cities discovered so far, the most awe-inspiring is perhaps the Derinkuyu city. It was discovered by accident in 1963. When a local family was renovating a house, a wall gave way to reveal a passage that led to this underground network. According to National Geographic, it is 11 levels deep, descending more than 280 feet to the bedrock, covering an area of over 4 miles squared. It includes temples, tombs, shops, living quarters, and even livestock pens. Over 15,000 air shafts were built into its design and would have been enough room to comfortably house approximately 20,000 people. The underground city has extending passages that connected to other neighboring and underground water well systems, providing fresh water. What is especially interesting regarding this underground world is the evidence to suggest that they were hiding from something terrifying. A sophisticated security system consisting of a particular build design accompanied by numerous gigantic rolling stone blocking doors that would seal the city from the inside. 
Moreover, its multi-layered design meant that each level could be sealed off from the next level using this same system. Just what were these people hiding from? Whatever it was, they obviously preferred to run rather than confront it. The structure was excruciatingly carved into the underground rock and is as strong today as the day it was built, safely accommodating guests such as archaeologists and tourists. Whoever built the network obviously had an advanced knowledge of stoneworking, architecture, engineering, and the local geography. Aging the structure has proven very difficult. There are no existing quarries, waste piles, or tools to examine. Furthermore, there are no records documenting its construction or people who may have lived there. Also, unfortunately, many cultures have used the underground towns over the centuries. According to UNESCO, it is believed that the first signs of monastic activity in Cappadocia date back to the 4th century, at which time acting on the instructions of Basil the Great in order to resist attacks from the Arabs, the people should band together into small, local communities and begin inhabiting cells dug into the rock. Therefore, modern academia tends to conclude that they were likely built by the Phrygian people around 800 BC. Yet it is also a strong possibility that they are far older than this, by the bishop's instruction they are to inhabit, not build. Therefore, it's safe to assume he was aware of their existence, rather than the person who thought them up. Some believe the underground caves were constructed by the very ancient Persian king Yima. Yima, attributed as mythological by many, is said to have had a lifespan of more than 900 years, a common feature of biblical figures as well. The Zoroastrian text Vendidad states that Yima built an underground city on the orders of the god Ahura Mazda to protect his people from a catastrophic winter. Much like the account of Noah in the Bible, Yima was instructed to collect pairs of the best animals and people as well as the best seeds in order to reseed the earth after the winter cataclysm. This was before the last ice age, 110,000 years ago. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History, although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past. Complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other. Cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuy, in particular, still exhibits its rolling doors still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators, as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge. Knowledge we hypothesize is lost knowledge due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization, which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, placed far within an antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanak, Derinkuyu, and Kemakli, all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kemakli via an underground tunnel, an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed. Thus, many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work. All seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, 
a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The Hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates and has since been shown to also affect the human brain, becoming known as the God Frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling. We have often explored the many curious tales of a particular ancient global catastrophe. The Great Flood, a global deluge featured in countless ancient accounts. Yet additionally, we have also recently explored the compelling evidential corroboration to these ancient claims, supportive geological and scientific evidence, which intriguingly support their indeed once being such a flood one of biblical proportions. The geological data supporting the change in sea levels are deserts, once seabeds, submerged pyramids, ruins, and not to mention the tales of Atlantis. However, one area which is rarely, if ever mentioned in these same libraries of history, are the underground cities once built. All of them, found on nearly every continent, were each buried beneath the earth in such a way as to avoid the land itself. The largest of these, Derinkuyu, discovered by complete accident during a house renovation. It strongly suggests that many more may still be laying undiscovered, waiting to see light again, resting undisturbed in complete darkness for unknown millennia. Thousands of connected tunnels have already been found and explored all over Europe thousands of miles of interlinking underground tunneling systems, all built as if those who created them found ground level either inhospitable or of a mortally perilous place to dwell, this for some unknown reason. Derinkuyu, as mentioned, a site we have explored in depth before, not only has curious multi-ton rolling door stoppers located at strategic locations, stones modern man is incapable of moving, but was also reportedly lit by a natural gas pocket they tapped, tunneled a pipe through the complex with holes positioned along which, set alight as if a London Victorian street, ingenious if true regardless of the genius that went into Derinkuyu itself. Alien corpses found within remains of the Hypogeum in Malta, it must be noted along with 7,000 other headless corpses, yet these complete bodies lay there alongside them. The oracle room within, just like the rumors of the natural light technology of Derinkuyu, also possessed, yet still possesses, its own extraordinary example of ancient high technology. With an altar stone in the oracle room placed in such a location, complemented by extraordinarily perfect architectural design, 
amplifies one's voice incredibly well and throughout the structure. Thousands of kilometers of groundwater-flooded caveways have recently been found in Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, along with many other locations, littered ancient ruins, remains, and inhabitations. Once this flooding is dated, we believe it will push the currently held chronology of man, and indeed these groups age, back massively, a subject we will cover soon. However, these digressions merely scratch the surface of what we intend to explore further and indeed share with all of you. So, any support in this quest is greatly appreciated. To help us out, check the description for links. Why did ancient man seemingly hide underground? Why did they make such gargantuan efforts to dig, design, and then seemingly live in these places long term? These are questions we find highly compelling. There are a number of ruins on Earth which are either located atop nearly impossible mountaintops or on the ledges of desert hilltops, making sanctuaries from masterfully cut stone temples, and Masada is of no exception. The first official funded excavations in the area took place from 1963 to 1965 and was under former IDF chief of staff and archaeologist Yigal Yadin. The dry desert climate allowed the preservation of classy frescoes and organic remains belonging to the rebels who once called the sanctuary temples home. However, it has long been claimed that the archaeological team were not given full access to the site and have repeatedly noted that they are aware of the site's secret underground layers, yet were not able to fully explore it during the 60s. However, recent changes to attitudes toward historic sites has secured funding for a full exploration of these as yet unexplored underground tunnels. For the first time since 2006, a Tel Aviv University team, headed by Roman period archaeologist Guy Stiebel, have launched new excavations at the UNESCO World Heritage Site, examining previously unexplored areas of the legendary fortress. Quote, this is the next generation, Stiebel told the Times, adding that his team planned to excavate new sections of the dwellings as well as a garden constructed by Herod. He further noted, quote, Our intention is to further explore a mysterious underground structure that was detected in the earliest aerial photographs of the site in the 1920s. Yet, alas, the building's underground layers have remained unexplored. Dr. Stiebel, intriguingly, although seemingly aware of the void's existence, was reluctant to label its past uses, stated that it was possibly used as a hideout or escape route during the Siege of Masada, although he made it clear that he is unsure at the moment of the original purpose of the underground systems. Dr. Stiebel exclaimed his excitement to return to the site after an 11-year absence in statements to the media, quote, a lifetime would not suffice to get a glimpse of all the hidden beauties of Masada. Its magic is not just in the equipment, it is also in small things." End quote. Even though several experts believe that more than 95% of Masada's total size has already been explored, Stiebel believes that its core is yet to be discovered. We will, of course, keep you posted on any controversial or intriguing discoveries made during the excavations. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Just how old is Cappadocia? Due to the immense age of many of the locations we so often cover here upon our channel, we are also, in turn, often confronted with an array of defense strategies, effective distraction techniques, which continue to allow that which cannot be explained to be simply and quietly brushed under the proverbial rug of modern understandings. Many institutes are funded too and work in cahoots toward a common goal. The preservation of a status quo which not only stifles logical historical pursuits, but are controlled by institutions who bury anything which could jeopardize their current monopoly over the many areas of human life and interaction. When it comes to concealing the true age of many of the planet's oldest ruins, it often falls to the geology departments to simply declare the most weathered of relics as merely that of geological formations. 
And if there is any ancient settlement on Earth which would have fit this bill, it's Cappadocia. An entire ancient settlement, so old that all of its surface structures have nearly eroded back to nature. However, although these remarkably old and incredibly heavily eroded surviving spires would have almost certainly been overlooked, dismissed as geological, Cappadocia, fortunately, has a labyrinth beneath its streets. An entire underground city, once somehow masterfully hewn from the bedrocks of Earth, rumored to have been lit by small candles fed by natural gas pockets found deep underground. It is, regardless, an incredible legacy of a past, highly capable civilization. And although we have extensively covered the ancient underground city of Derinkuyu, along with its as yet unexplained multi-ton rolling doors, not only how they were made and then placed in passages, but indeed how they were rolled when in use, as they are of such tremendous weights. However, what many people are unaware of, quite possibly due to the difficulty modern academia has in explaining their existence, is that there lies many more underground layers and labyrinths all across Cappadocia, thankfully meaning that the sole surviving spires on the surface have not withstood the sands of time in vain, for they now stand as signposts to this incredible, baffling, and simply enormous ancient mega-metropolis, all carved from the solid rock beneath Cappadocia. As mentioned, many of you will now be aware of Derenkuyu, an underground city whose legend tells of it having once been a sanctuary for ancient people who endured an ice age, possibly making the site far older than 10,000 years. However, what many of you may have not been aware of is the other remarkable underground city of Kaimakli, which secretly stretches across below the grounds of this ancient ruin. Many of the passageways carved untold millennia ago are still used to this day as storage areas, stables, and cellars. The underground city at Kaimakli differs from Derinkuyu in terms of its structure and layout. The tunnels are lower, narrower, and more steeply inclined. Cappadocia appears in some areas as one of the most heavily eroded sites on Earth, yet it is fortunately still attributed to its true original identity, that of an ancient ruin. And thanks to the miles of still unexplored caverns below this incredibly ancient site, its dismissal as geological in the future seems very unlikely. It is a place which we find highly compelling. How can one still claim the pyramids to have been tombs when they are aware of the astounding burial chambers found within the Valley of the Kings? With the tomb of the sons of Ramses II being not only the largest, but what many archaeologists believe, second to the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx, is the next greatest discovery ever made within ancient Egypt. A literal labyrinth of chambers, it was initially discovered in 1825, yet due to its gargantuan scale, it wasn't until 1995, and thanks to an Egyptologist known as Kent R. Weeks, that we have begun to re-establish its true possible size. The tomb was examined several times, even being investigated by Howard Carter himself, yet due to the outer tombs having been looted in antiquity. He simply used them as a dumping ground for rubble. It was not until 1995, during the Theban mapping project, when Weeks decided to clear the outer tombs. Approximately 70 rooms lined along long corridors, running far back into the hillside were found. The number of rooms were then said to correspond to the number of sons the pharaoh sired. However, further excavations have revealed that the tomb is even larger, the size of an underground town cut directly from a granite hillside, its true scale still unknown. As of 2006, at least 130 chambers have so far been discovered, yet work continues on clearing the rest of this underground maze. We feel that although a later civilization, one lacking the knowledge to build such monuments, came along and claimed these relics as their own, with the possible motivation of an illusion of power, like that of the many other sites we cover worldwide, predictably, now also conveniently tied to these groups in academia, 
Yet the true feat these chambers would have been, along with the riches these pharaohs often left behind, are not only proof that these creations and collections of wealth were not only far beyond the ability of copper-wielding academically claimed builders, but that the archaeological evidence does indeed support the theory that these kings either ruled during the creator's civilization or built these monuments themselves. Yet how remains an infuriating enigma. We also feel their age, and indeed original lineage, in the true history of the Giza Plateau is what ultimately becomes convoluted. Yet I digress. Who built KV-5? It is a place we find highly compelling. In 1835, an unknown laborer in Kent, the UK, was doing his usual field work when he struck the soil in what could be classified as a lucky spot. Upon impacting the ground, his spade disappeared into the earth, breaking a doorway into an underworld like no other. The lad soon realized that he was standing on an entrance to hollow underground caverns that from the surface could not be seen. Word quickly spread regarding the find and the curiosity to see what was actually down there soon began to boil over. A local school teacher kindly volunteers his young son Joshua to make the dangerous trip down beneath the ground to see what was actually down there. He described rooms encrusted with millions of carefully arranged shells. People were obviously a little skeptical regarding the claims initially, yet when the hole was eventually widened, allowing to see for themselves, they were stunned when the boy's accounts were confirmed as completely true. Now known as the Shell Grotto of Margate, its origins or purpose still remains a complete mystery to this day. Almost all the surface area of the walls and roof are covered in mosaics created entirely out of seashells, totaling about 190 square meters of mosaic, calculated to be around 4.6 million shells. Various hypotheses have dated its construction to any time in the past 3,000 years. Theories have included that it was an 18th or 19th century rich man's folly, that it was a prehistoric astronomical calendar, and even that it could be connected to the Knights Templar. Interestingly, no publicly known scientific dating of the site has yet to be completed. The most frequently used shells throughout the mosaic, mussels, cockles, whelks, limpets, scallops, and oysters are largely local. They could have been found in sufficient numbers from four possible bays, yet the majority of the mosaic is formed from the flatwinkle, which is used to create the background infill between the designs. However, this shell is found only rarely locally, so would have been collected from shores west of Southampton. Shell Grotto is certainly an amazing, yet not very well-known find. More scientific research is clearly needed if we are to unravel the mysteries of its incredible construction.